Next, eager to counter the growing influence of Russia, EU leaders have sought to reassure Balkan states about their long-promised hopes of joining the bloc. Their latest summit has wrapped up in Bulgaria, one that's also put them on a collision course with Donald Trump over Iran. The European Commission chief, Jean-Claude Juncker, says that later this Friday, the EU will begin moves to block the effects of US sanctions on Iran as part of efforts to preserve the 2015 nuclear deal. Well, for more on this story, let's bring in uh, Dave Keating, our correspondent in uh, the Belgian uh, capital. Dave, first of all, EU leaders have put on rather a, a show of strength to keep this hard hammered out nuclear deal uh, alive. But now all eyes are very much on European companies to see if they are also willing to play ball. Yeah, exactly. Today is going to be a real test of European resolve, as now all eyes are on European companies to see if they too will show the same kind of unity uh, against the Trump administration's decision that EU leaders showed in Sofia yesterday. Now, Jean-Claude Juncker, the European Commission president, said at 10.30 today he will invoke this so-called blocking statue. This is actually a piece of legislation that was introduced in 1996, designed to counter potential sanctions for European companies doing business with Cuba, but it was never used. And so now they're looking at how to actually implement it and to tailor it to the specific conditions of the Iran situation. And they have to do that really quickly because they have to reassure European companies that they are somehow going to be shielded from these sanctions. The uh, statute would actually forbid European companies from complying with the sanctions, and they would allow the EU to financially compensate any economic loss as a result of those sanctions. Uh, but right now, so far, companies are looking very wary. They're not looking very confident in the EU's ability to shield them. Already, French uh, oil, giant, oil and gas giant Total has said that a, a $5 billion gas deal with Iran uh, may be wound down. Airbus is looking at a deal to sell 100 jets to Iran. Um, this could have a really huge economic impact because last year, uh, imports uh, from Iran uh, and exports to Iran were both uh, around 10 billion euros. Uh, that trade has been growing very fast since the Iran nuclear deal went into effect. So all eyes are going to be on companies, how they react today to the invocation of this blocking statute. And very briefly, Dave, away from those bigger geopolitical issues, uh, Balkan states have also been keen to get assurances from the bloc about their future membership bids. Yeah, they would have been disappointed, I think, with this summit outcome. These six Western Balkan countries, that's Serbia, Bosnia, Kosovo, Macedonia, Montenegro, and Albania, they're considered kind of the last six to join the EU. Uh, the Western Balkans is considered a, a whole where eventually the EU will uh, encompass this area. But the problem is there's really no appetite for accession uh, in the EU right now. And that was the attitude we definitely saw in Sofia yesterday. Uh, both uh, President Macron and Chancellor Merkel said that uh, we are not going to see Western Balkan countries accede anytime soon. Merkel was asked if by 2025, she very flatly said no. Uh, so instead, they're replacing it with this kind of Activity agenda in the meantime, in which Western Balkan countries will kind of coordinate with the EU. They were given assurances yesterday that the connectivity agenda is not a substitute for membership and that they will eventually be welcomed into the EU. But as President Macron said yesterday, the EU needs to get its own house in order before it can welcome any new members. So a disappointing result for the Western Balkan countries, but there will be another summit in 2020 in Zagreb, Croatia. Dave Keating in Brussels, thank you very much.